And then uh, the other corollary is, are uh, enrollees just using their HSAs as a savings account? And this data is from 2007. 83% of HSAs had a balance of less than $2,500. And remember, an individual can put in $3,000 a year, so less than $2,500. And in the same year, 2007, the average amount spent on an HSA uh, was a little over $1,100. So people are not just using these as savings accounts. Okay, what about preventive care? Are people just hoarding the money and not, not seeking preventive care? HSA holders are much more likely to seek preventive care. Um, utilization uh, of preventive care when you compare HSA holders to traditional insurance holders, uh, HSA holders utilize about a 30% uh, increase in preventive care measures. And also, many high deductible plans now are providing first dollar coverage for, um, for preventive care the high deductible plans that are associated with HSAs. In other words, insurance companies, uh, they know this data, they crunch these numbers on a daily basis. They know what preventive care measures are going to save them money in the long run. And in the high deductible plans, they're providing first dollar coverage for things like uh, diabetic screening, uh, certain cancer screenings, um, smoking cessation, um, obesity uh, kinds of uh, consideration, cessation, and so forth. So. Preventive care is, is absolutely being used uh, by enrollees in HSAs. And then fourth, the fourth objection was, what about universal coverage? And have HSAs slowed uh, the movement towards universal, universal health uh, coverage? And at the Policy Center, we like to actually think of it the other way around. Um, we sort of look at this in the opposite fashion, and basically we see that HSAs are, are really an excellent means of decreasing the number of uninsured. So, okay, here's where you got to get your pens and pencils out. This is the, the latest uh, numbers. The policy brief goes through January 2008, and these numbers go through January 2009. So it gives you another 12 months of data. And remember, this program is still pretty immature. I mean, we, we all, it's only been around for five years. And I kind of look at HSAs as being sort of where IRAs were when they first started. I mean, there was, they kind of started out slow, and then they took off. And I think we're just on the cusp of that, where HSAs are about to take off, unless um, there is some huge policy movement that makes them onerous or eliminates <coughs> HSAs or something like that. Uh, first of all, the total enrollment in this country as of January 2009 was 8 million people, and that's up from 6.1 million people a year before. Uh, that's a 30% increase, and that 8 million people represents about 4.5% of, um, of the population in this country. Now, what about the state of Washington? Well, Washington went from a little over 101,000 to over 126,000 HSA enrollees in that 12-month period which is an increase of about 25%. So we're pretty close to what the national average is. The important number is that these things are really becoming popular. One half of all the companies in the United States now report that they're offering HSAs to their employees. Um, in that 12-month period, January to January, 08 to 09, large group coverage increased by 35%, and small group coverage uh, increased by almost the same amount. It was 34 percent. A very interesting study came out in March of this year, just two months ago, by Aetna, which I'm sure all you're aware is one of the larger insurance companies um, in the country. What Aetna did was they looked back over the five years of HSAs and they said, okay, let's match these to our traditional plans and let's see how HSAs stack up. So this was an apples to apples comparison of one insurance company. What they found was employers saved, employers saved $21 million per 10,000 employees. And if you do the math on that, that works out to be a little over $2,000 per employee for those enrolled in HSAs compared to traditional insurance plans. They also found that HSA holders sought more preventive care, just like we've discussed, they had a 10% lower use of primary care and a 15% lower use of specialty care. 
They had lower emergency room use when compared to a traditional plan. They had the same or higher levels of screening for such things as diabetes, um, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and so forth. And they had the same or higher level of use for uh, drugs for chronic diseases. So needless to say, Aetna is very enthusiastic about their uh, HSA programs. So at the Policy Center, what we would recommend is, first of all, make HSAs more attractive, not less attractive. And second of all, make HSAs, give them a broader appeal. In other words, capture more of the uninsured market. And if we split this up, state level, federal level, what are the things that we could do at the state level? Well, the first thing we could do, as Dr. Matthews recommended, is decrease some of these 57 mandates. Uh, let's go down to 13 or 14 like Idaho. Um, let's go down to fewer like they have in Arizona. Or let's allow people in the state of Washington to purchase uh, health care across state lines so that we can, we can have high deductible plans with fewer mandates in them. Um, let's also allow insurance companies to design a buffet of plans so that um, the patient as consumer can, can choose an array of plans and not, not plans that are strictly set by mandate rich plans. Also at the state level, let's introduce HSAs into the Medicare program and let's, let's introduce HSAs into basic health, whatever our basic health plan is. Again, let's give patients more control over their health care dollars. At the federal level, um, two things. Again, make HSAs more attractive, not less attractive. Uh, two weeks ago, the Senate Finance Committee um, had three or four proposals looking at HSAs, which really narrowed them down. And um, I don't know if that's going to become law or not. I don't know where those recommendations are going to go. But the current movement, in, in at least in the Senate Finance Committee, is uh, is to not make these things more attractive, to not make HSAs more attractive. And the second thing that can be done at the federal level is let's allow Medicare patients to utilize HSAs. Let's allow them to take their HSA and their high deductible plan beyond the age of 65. So in conclusion, let me just say uh, HSAs are growing in popularity 30% over the last year. Um, enrollees represent all ages and all socioeconomic classes. Uh, enrollees are satisfied with their plans and when asked would not go back to uh, a traditional plan. Enrollees have become better and smarter consumers of health care. And lastly, HSAs are holding down the cost of health care. Thank you.